The Wajapaya opens with a number of preliminary domestic rites in the sacrifice's own house. First, the day is blessed in the Punya Havachana. The various articles for this ritual are being laid out before the sacrificer, who has just performed the morning Agnihotra, comes out with his wife. The sacrificer, Mr. Bapat, recalls in his speech several great Vedic rituals which he has performed. He was the only Brahmin left in Pune who still maintained the three fires of antiquity in his house. Presents are now being offered to him. The ceremony of blessing the day normally precedes the performance of domestic and Vedic rites. In this case, not only the priests belonging to the sacrifice's own Yajurveda school participated, but priests from Rekveda and Samaveda also joined in. Many of these priests will participate in the Vajrapaya. The blessing of the day is followed at noon by the Nandish Radha, an oblation to the deceased ancestors of which a number of Brahmins are fed. The recitations are according to the Hiranyakeshi school of the Black Yajurveda, to which the sacrificer belongs. The sacrificer himself only partakes of his meal after his Brahmin guests have finished theirs. He accepts the traditional homage of his wife, who also has an important part to play in the ritual. It is on the second day that the actual preliminaries to the Soma sacrifice start. Burning coals on the sacrifice's house fires are transferred to corresponding fireplaces on a terrain laid elsewhere. A bullock cart carries the fire, a horse-drawn gary the sacrificer and his wife. The sacrificer carries in a white bag these Soma plants which will later be pressed. The fire has just been carried out with Yajurveda formulae. It is placed in the cart and the procession starts. A new sacrificial terrain has been measured and laid out on the sports grounds of the SP College in Pune. Preceded by the mangled band, the ancient procession moves with modern pageantry through the busiest parts of Pune city.
Today, more introductory rites will take place. The 17 priests officiating at the Wajapaya will be selected and feasted, and the sacrificer will be formally inaugurated. A festive and colourful arch greets the procession at the entrance of the college gardens. Grand celebration of the Wajapaya sacrifice. The fire is carried in and placed in the new hut. It is called Pragwangsa or eastward facing bamboo hut. During the first four days, this hut will be the center of the ritual. This is the plan of the hut. Facing the auspicious east is placed the square offering fire in which all oblations are offered. To the right, that is to the west of it, are the altar platform and a circular space where the utensils are kept. At the far end is the round householder's fire, really the kitchen fire, where the oblations are cooked. Facing the south, the quarter of death, is the crescent-shaped Dakshinagni. Below, to the north of the round fire, you see a small fireplace that is used at the Pravarya offering. The fireplaces are built of earth and bricks. The priests are seated about them, sacrificer and Brahman in the south, the executive priest, the Advaryu in the east, the Hota northwest and the singers southwest. A party of official guests awaits the opening of the ceremony while the priests await their selection. There are 17 priests among whom five principal ones. Sadashya with the beard, Udgatar, Brahman, Advaryu and Hotar. Each priest is formally selected and his stipend fixed. The sacrificer pauses a moment to converse with a special dignitary, the Soma Pravaka, or announcer of the Soma sacrifice, while the Hotar recites a glorification of priesthood. After the priests have been selected, they are feasted with the Madhuparka, a touch of honey, a mixture of honey, milk and other delicacies appropriate to the hospitable reception of a guest are offered to them. Each priest also receives a cow. Among the offerings which are here presented to the potar is a golden necklace. A tilaka, to ward off evil, is put between the eyebrows. The announcer of the Soma also receives a cow. The next step is the preparation of a special vessel which is used at the Pravagya offering. The Brahman follows the action closely in order to be able to correct any errors. The Advaryu summons him to rise up and then puts the implements in position. The vessel, like many other implements, is made on the spot. Several kinds of clay are used in moulding three bowls. Some of the clay must first be smelled and approved by a horse. Three bowls are then moulded out of this clay. The wet clay bowls are taken to the householder's fire and baked in a hot straw fire. One of the three bowls represents the so-called Mahavira pot that is used at the Pravargya, and the other two are held in reserve.
Next, a huge sacrificial pole is cut and measured. Now the sacrificer will be formally inaugurated. His consecration is preceded by a so-called ishti, comprising the offering of a sacrificial cake and several butter oblations. All oblations are, of course, prepared on the round fire and offered into the square fire. The sacrificer is carried in and takes his place south of the offering fire. The executive priest, the Advaryu, strides forward with a broom to sweep the fireplace and then lays out the rice and barley grains that go into the making of the sacrificial cake. He places the mortar on an antelope skin and throws two half portions from his sherpa into it. He then begins to husk the grain. The sacrificer's wife continues this task. As soon as the grains have been husked, they are ground to flour. The flour is then put in a pan over the kitchen fire. The Advaryu's assistant heats the flour. The Advaryu then pours milk onto it to make a mixture. The assistant stirs and kneads this mixture, which is later baked on 11 hot pots herds to make a flat cake. This cake is then offered with appropriate invocations to Agni and Vishnu. As the sacrificer watches, the Advaryu makes an altar platform behind the offering fire and sprinkles water on it. Several other rites intervene and then the oblations to various gods begin with the preliminary offerings. The sacrificer, who has bathed and shaved, is now ready for consecration. He is dressed in new white clothes. An antelope horn is handed to him and a belt and turban are put on. The day ends with the consecration. The sacrificer's wife again husks and grinds the grain for another cake oblation identical with the one performed yesterday. This introduces the first Upasad day the day of the Soma purchase. Note the wooden knife which the Advaryu uses to measure the altar platform. No implement in the ancient ritual appears to contain iron. The kindling wood for the fire is ready. The Advaryu sweeps the fireplace with his broom, and then he and his assistant carry the butter oblations and the sacrificial cake to the offering fire. The wood is put on the fire. The Hotar recites the Samidani stanzas, and when he pronounces Om, the Advaryu places a twig on the fire. The butter oblation is only poured when the Hotar gives the word. All actual oblations take place at the Hotar's command. Vow shut. Let the fire carry. The Soma will now be bought and will be brought in solemnly on this cart. The price of the Soma is a cow which is now being led in. At the seventh step of its right foreleg, a small butter offering is made. The earth is collected with the wooden knife. One third of the earth will be thrown into the householder's fire, one third into the offering fire, and the remainder kept at home by the sacrificer's wife. The Advaryu now buys the Soma from a trader, cuts the stalks by handfuls, wraps them in a white cloth, and lifts the bundle with the charm, I have risen with the life, the good life, risen with the juice of plants, with the vigor of rain, risen in the suit of the immortals.
The bundle of soma is then placed in the soma cart, which is drawn by two heifers. Yadvaryu orders the chanting of the Subramanya invocation and a recitation by the Hota. At the eastern gate of the bamboo hut, the Advaryu carries the Soma to a special wooden throne, which is placed south of the offering fire. Immediately after this, fire is drilled for a welcoming oblation for King Soma. This is again a cake oblation. The sparks generated by the friction of the drilling woods are used to kindle straw, and the straw to kindle wood. Then the priests swear loyalty to the sacrificer and promise to save him from curses and maledictions. Finally, all priests file past the soma on its throne and touch it with a twig to make it swell. The Subramanya priest sings the Subramanya invocation to invite Indra, the gods and the Brahmins to come to the soma pressing. Then a cow is milked for the first Pravagya offering. The Advaryu commands the singers to chant and the Hota to recite. The Pravagya is a dairy offering in which two kinds of milk, cow milk and goat milk, are mixed with butter. The Mahavira pot, which we saw being made earlier, is filled with clarified butter on the little fireplace north of the round fire. After the cow, a goat is also milked on the spot. The fire is fanned to heat the butter until it melts. The milk is brought to the boil on the householder's fire and is then poured into the pot so that the liquid butter overflows and catches fire. Butter and milk are mixed in a huge flash. The mixed oblation is then offered into the square offering fire. The Pravarga is held twice a day, in the morning and in the afternoon, during the three days prior to the pressing day. The Advaryu traces the west-east spine of a new sacrificial terrain, then the north-south line at the eastern end, and the new altar. From a hole on the northern side of the measured area, earth is dug to build a new fire altar. Further to the west, some assistants have already started building the Havidana barn, the barn in which the Soma will be kept and pressed.
Today, the pravargya is again being performed in the morning and the afternoon. The same sacrifice is held twice more on the fifth day, the third upasad day. The oblations are made for the last time in the square offering fire. The Hotar recites his portion of the Upasad recitation, accompanying the verses with characteristic gestures. In the circular area are kept the ladles, deerskins and vessels that are used in the various rites. Those utensils belonging to the pravargya will be collected and burnt in the great fire. The sacrificer has delegated most of his duties to the executive priest and himself remains largely inactive. The Agnidra priest cleans and assembles the pravargya implements. The sacrificer's wife prays at the householder's fire. She has built her own little altar of icons in a corner of the bamboo hut. This is the plan of the new terrain. Due east, a new huge altar has been built in its own hut. West of it is the barn where the soma carts, the soma cups and the soma itself are kept with the sound holes in the top left corner. To the west again, the saras or sitting place where the chief hotar and five minor hotars sit, each behind his own fireplace. The singers sit around the center pole. At the north, between barn and saras, the Agnidra priest has his own fire and hut. Here are the huts as they look in reality. We are facing the Soma cart barn from the east. Soon the little throne on which the Pravargya implements are laid out will be carried in. Great symbolic significance is attached to the ancient Pravargya rite. It is represented as the head of the sacrifice, as a man, as a holy marriage between the gods out of which the sacrificer, now about to move to the main field of sacrifice, obtains a new body and is in fact reborn among the gods. For this reason too, perhaps the pravargya implements are placed on the new altar in the rough shape of a man. The fire is carried from the old altar to the new one and placed upon the pravargya tools that represent the old man who is now made new. The hotar recites for the oblation. Meanwhile, a high caste carpenter goes on manufacturing sacrificial utensils. Here he is working on a wheel that will be used during the chariot race. When the fire is burning on the new altar, two carts are brought in from the west to the Havedana Mandapa, the barn situated between the altar and the hut where the priests will sit. The axles are oiled with butter, 
and the carts put in place. Now the priest's hut is to be set up. The hole for the Audumbari pole is dug and the pole itself, behind which the singers will sit, is erected. Back in the barn, two interconnected pairs of sound holes are dug on the spot where the soma will be pressed. The new field is now ready for a complete shift. The sacrifices family is conducted from the old hut, which is really their house, to the new altar, and the soma is ceremonially taken to the barn. A white cloth shelters the family as a provisional roof. The Advaryu holds a tip of it in his hand with an offering ladle in which an oblation waits to be offered into the new fire as soon as the family arrives. <laughs> <laughs> 